What is up, YouTube? Welcome to Edged Mindset. I am your gracious host, Carter. We're going to be looking at a sweet little budget knife from Boker Plus. This is an OTF. And I would go as far as to say that this might be my top choice for entry-level OTFs. This is the Boker Plus Falcon, designed by Raymond Lotak. I am not familiar with his stuff. I am simply regurgitating words that I've read on the internet. I don't know who Raymond is. If anybody can expand on his other work, where he comes from, what his designs are, please let me know. But this is from Boker Plus, designed by Raymond Lotak, the uh, Falcon OTF from Boker Plus. So why is this cool? Well, uh, because it is affordable. Uh, I got this for under $100. So an OTF for under $100, but that's not the kicker. The kicker is boom carbon fiber top baby yeah buddy m390 steel yep 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 under a hundred dollars otf with those features now granted uh i believe this is on sale for that under under a hundred dollars i think the normal price on this is like 150 but right now you can get these for under a hundred dollars and if you're interested in otfs checking them out uh, seeing if it's something you would like. I think this is a good option. Now, that being said, this is not a perfect knife. It has a lot of issues, and we're going to talk about that. Well, a lot of issues, quote unquote. It has some quirks, and it has some things that are not the best. Um, but, you know, for this price point, if you've been reluctant to get to OTFs because you're just not sure it's your thing, this might be a good way to uh, dip your toes in, especially if you find this on the secondary market. I mean, you could get this thing for like 60 bucks. Um, so that's an excellent deal. So let's, uh, let's go through some specs and stuff. Let's talk about this guy. Let's, let's have a conversation. I like how this carbon fiber kind of blends into my background. Looks cool. Really nice carbon fiber, by the way. So uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. So Boker Plus, simple packaging, just the usual uh, magnetic closure on here. This is billed as, oh, you don't really get anything. It's just the knife and some documentation. This is billed as made in the U.S. I'm going to kind of plead the fifth on that. I I don't know if I believe that it's actually made in the U.S. I think it's one of those things where it uh, meets the definition of made in the U.S. I could be wrong, but I, I really don't think this was. But that's what they say. They say made in the U.S. Um, they don't say assembled in the U.S. They don't say components are mostly made in the U.S. They say made in the U.S. So Take that for what it is. So this is, um, you know, some people might call this a large OTF. I would call it a medium size, but maybe large. I mean, it's it's a decent sized knife. They do have a mini version of this if it is larger than what you would like. The blade length on this, let's get a measurement. We're looking at about three and a half inches roughly for the blade length and about eight inches overall, just a little bit longer than eight inches overall. So to me, this is a good carry size OTF. Let's compare it to the usual. Uh, there it is. My paramilitary two was freaking hiding somewhere. So let's compare the size. Overall length is about the same. You can see the width is a lot less girthy, as you can see. So that does aid in carryability. It is kind of uh, thick though, you can see how the, it's it's quite a bit thicker. Well, maybe not quite a bit, but it is thicker than the paramilitary too. It does kind of bow out in the middle as well. So uh, thicker in the middle than on the ends. But one of the benefits of OTFs is that it does give you this kind of slim profile. So you can get a relatively long knife with a good amount of cutting edge, but in the closed position, since it just goes directly into the handle, you can get a pretty slim package. And uh, if you're looking at like Microtech, who's really refined that ratio, it's like the Ultratech line. I mean, it is, it, it's amazing. This one is a little bulkier than it needs to be, probably just due to manufacturing, you know, being able to engineer it to, to fit efficiently in the handle. Uh, they probably just didn't quite, didn't quite get there. Let's get a weight. Uh, it's heavier than it probably should be. Um, so nine ounces, what? <laughs> Wait a minute, what am I what am I doing here? Why are we starting off at 6.2 ounces? Come on. All right, <laughs> nine ounce knife, 3.2 ounces, which 
anything under four for a blade length this long uh, is very, very good. I mean, that's that's really, really awesome. So that comes from the aluminum and the carbon fiber. And honestly, like I said, had this had some better engineering in here, uh, they probably could have got this down even, even smaller. You can see how thick that carbon fiber is. I don't know if it needs to be that thick. I do want to take this apart. I'm curious what the mechanism is. I assume it's just the same Microtech mechanism with the same carrier plate and the same uh, trap doors and springs. But you never know. Uh, with, when you have something designed by somebody like Raymond Lotak, I don't know if he just designed the aesthetics or if he actually did a full mechanism design. I would, I would think just the aesthetics, not the full mechanism design, but we'll see. So what do you have here? Aluminum, carbon fiber, you've got a deep carry pocket clip. It is pretty standard, you know, nothing really to say there, kind of your normal pocket clip. The finish on the aluminum is not um, the best. It's some sort of paint coating. It is not a hard anodized finish like, like what you'd get on a higher end uh, OTF. Same with the pocket clip, it's just kind of painted. Um, it is devoid of markings though, which I like, and I know a lot of people will appreciate. You can access the pocket clip right there. It is not reversible, so this is not really left hand capable, although that's kind of up to you to decide. You can put this in your left pocket. It just means you got to flip it around to actuate it. Uh, so you can carry it left handed. It's just not inherently the exact same as carrying it right handed. I uh, can't move that clip like you can on Microtex. The carbon fiber is done really well. Uh, it's really good quality. It is milled very, very well. I don't see any voids or inclusions or any weird things going on. I was very surprised at how well this carbon fiber is done at this price point. And it is a testament to how carbon fiber is not that bad to work with. It's easy to machine. It's easy to um, get into the proper shape. It is not a difficult, it's not like zirconium, which is flammable and difficult and titanium, which is gummy and hard on machines. Uh, obviously, if they're able to do it at this price point, because you've got texturing. I mean, this is the same texturing as the normal Falcon. It's just carbon fiber. Uh, so the same thing on this back, you've got these grooves here and they're all cut into this carbon fiber. You have all these things cut in here. You've got nice recessed torque screws. Can't wait to take this apart. Um, so that's all good. The, the handle's pretty decent. I would love this to be anodized, but what can you do? Uh, the other thing I noticed is that the button is pretty simple, but effective. I like how it's not a symmetrical pyramid uh, so that you get a little bit more of a ledge when you are closing the knife. So you get a little more leverage because in my experience with OTFs, that's the harder part. Actuating the knife is pretty easy. Closing it, trying to pull back, that's where you're have less leverage and your thumb muscles aren't as developed as pushing. And so having kind of this shorter ledge here makes it a little bit easier. And I definitely appreciate that. Um, so handle, we are done with handle. Let's talk about the blade. The blade's probably the most disappointing part. It is M390, I have no idea how the heat treatment is on this. I would proceed with caution in terms of it being spectacular. Uh, the M390 is probably in designation only uh, but I cannot confirm or deny that. I have not run this through cutting tests, edge retention, things like that. I just know in cheaper blades, when you see M390, you can't assume it's as good as more expensive M390. But, you know, it is what it is. It says that. Uh, the grinds on here are pretty lackluster and sloppy. Uh, just single, single tone. They're all satin. Uh, and they're all going in the same direction, too. So you don't get any sort of... Uh, parallel or not parallel, um, whatever the opposite of parallel is, where you have grains on the flats maybe going this way, and then you've got the grinds on the blade going this way. Everything goes this way. You can also see how it is getting scraped, presumably in the mechanism. So you have horizontal scrapes on here. I think the there is the low-tech design right there, low-tech design M390. You are seeing some scrapes, so it is kind of I don't know if that was from the original manufacturing or if that's from actually deploying this thing. Pretty decent thick stock here. It's a recurve blade. It's up to you if you like that or not. You've got this nice wedge at the top here. I think it looks cool, looks unique. The blade's a little disproportionate to the handle. Handle's pretty big, pretty wide. Blade is very, very skinny. Would have been cool if there was a little more width on this blade, but 
you know, what can you do at this price point? It is what it is. Probably the most disappointing thing is this is dull as all get out. Um, I have not received a knife this dull from factory in 10 years. Uh, I mean, look at this. It is literally, I would, I would argue this is unsharpened. It has a secondary bevel, but I would say this is an unsharpened blade. It is not usable unless you sharpen it. And that is very disappointing, especially at this price point, you're gonna get a lot of people that don't have a sharpener and being a recurve, it's even more difficult to sharpen. So that is a big red flag. Uh, maybe I should have said that at the beginning in case people didn't last this long, but that's, that's a legitimate problem. This thing is not sharp at all. And in my opinion, unusable as a knife. This example, which I got brand new, I bought this brand new from a retailer. This is not uh, pre-owned. Uh, this is unusable. Look at that. Unusable as a knife. And like I said, being a recurve, it makes it even more difficult to sharpen. So a lot of people that are going to get this knife might not have the ability to even put a proper edge on this. So that's a big boo on this knife. Unfortunate thing. Don't like that. Other thing I wanted to note is blade play. I mean, it's what I expect. It has more than a Microtech. Um, however, it's not egregious. It's not super bad. Um, no, no surprises. You know, you always hope when you get an OTF that maybe uh, it's magically going to be comparable to Microtech. You know, maybe they did the tolerances tight enough that uh, not an issue there, but it has quite a bit of blade play. Now action. I love the action on this thing. So I will say the action is superb. So if you want just an OTF fidget toy, 100% recommend. It has a great sound. It's perfect ting, perfect thud. Um, it has a lot of power, but it's not difficult to actuate, or at least it feels like a lot of power. Some of that I think comes from the super lightweight handle. You really feel this blade kind of um, open and close as it hits that stop. This is one of my favorite OTFs just to dink with, just to sit there and play with. Um, it is very satisfying to open and close this. I don't know if they magically just firing all cylinders happen to create uh, really good action on here. If it was kind of an accident just due to materials, I don't know if it's as satisfying on the non-carbon fiber version or if the lightweight carbon fiber has something to do with it. But I was expecting the ting sound of the spring. Uh, none of that here. It is a uh, really satisfying open and closing on here. And also I've had zero misfires. So no misfires, no issues. I've been firing this thing for days, just sitting there and I've had no issues with the firing of this knife. So mechanically it seems to be top notch. If they could just learn how to sharpen, sharpen the blade. Anybody that has another version of this knife, let me know if they have the same dull edge issue or if maybe mine just skipped final sharpening or, or it was a Friday or something on that day and it just didn't get sharpened. But So that's it guys. Um, in my opinion, still a good intro OTF if you're wanting to try it out. They've got a few different models. Uh, they do have one that is not a recurve. So if you are concerned about the sharpening and not being able to do that, maybe head towards that model. I don't know if they have the M390 and uh, uh, carbon fiber. The regular version of this knife is just D2. For all I know, that D2 might actually be better performing than their M390. I don't know that for a fact, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't take that off the realm of possibilities with a knife like this. So, all right, guys, I am out. Thanks for watching. You guys take care. I'll catch you on the next one.